Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. And in this video in our A-level Chemistry Revision series, we are going to be stepping out of our IGCSE understanding of how an atom appears and we're going to learn about the advanced model of the atom. So, if you can remember at IGCSE level, you were taught of a planetary model in which by electrons orbit around a central, central body that is a nucleus. However, this model is slightly flawed and there is simply a better model in which that can detail and more accurately map the locations of the electrons around the atom. Now, this model will simply not just describe the path in which electrons orbit around the nucleus. In fact, it doesn't. It describes the way in which electrons exist in regions around the atom rather than paths. All right? So, the two things are similar in that both models have the understanding of energy levels. There will be principal energy levels 1, 2, 3, until whatever. All right? So there will be, will be principal energy levels, and within each principal energy level, there's a limit in the number of electrons that can occupy these levels. So for the first level, just like in our IGCC model, would be 2, second level would be 8, third level would be 18, and so on and so on and so on. All right? Now, each principal energy level will be split into different regions, and these are called subshells or orbitals. All right? And there are four different type of regions, the S subshell, the P subshell, and the D subshell, and the F subshell. The S subshell, S subshell, subshell, will contain two electrons max. P subshell, six electrons max. D subshells, ten electrons max. F subshells, fourteen electrons max. These are something you have to remember. All right. So let's look closely at the S subshell. The S subshell describes a spherical region that can occupy a maximum of two electrons. Okay. And I'm going to represent, or we usually represent in this course, as the F subshell as a box, a square box, okay? And the electrons are represented as ticks. And they can occupy, an S subshell can, um, can be occupied by two electrons, so we can contain a maximum of two ticks within our square box. Okay, so that is the S subshell, and that's how we represent it. Now, the other subshell is the P subshell. P subshells can exist in three different types of appearances that is version P minus 1, P naught, and P 1. And a P subshell can contain a maximum of six electrons. So just like our uh, S subshell, we're going to be using square boxes. And since a square box can contain only two electrons max, we're going to use three square boxes to describe our P subshell. Okay? Now, look closely at how electrons fill up within our P subshells. Okay, so the electrons fill up left to right and they will occupy all the empty square boxes before they occupy a square box that has already been occupied. As you can see, uh, going from 1 to 3, the electrons will occupy left to right and in the empty boxes first before they start filling up in the boxes that already have been occupied. Okay, now uh, it's, it's very important to understand that um, the subshell which is basically three boxes together. One box out of the all three can be called a sub subshell because it's within the three boxes. But that's up to you. Um, I don't think that that will come up in the exam, but it's just worth remembering. Okay, and the other uh, one would be the D subshell. So the D subshell is just like the P subshell but with two extra boxes uh, on its side and it fills out the same. So you fill up the electrons uh, left to right empty boxes first before you start filling the uh, the occupied boxes. Same for the D subshells with seven, okay, uh, with seven boxes because it can contain fourteen. Okay. Now let's look at uh, principal energy level one. So that's your first ring, your first uh, your first energy level, and it will only contain one subshell, and that is the S subshell. And we're going to label this S subshell as 1S. 1 being the basically the level, not the number of subshells, okay? So the S electron, uh, the S subshell can contain uh, a maximum of two electrons, so therefore the principal energy level 1 can only contain two electrons, okay? Now principal energy level 2 will contain subshells S and P. I'm going to label those 2S and 2P. 
So the total number of electrons that can occupy the two shells S and P is 2 plus 6 because 2 comes from the S subshell and 6 comes from the P subshell and therefore the total number is 8 electrons. Okay, And principle energy level 3, it will contain 3 subshells of S, P and D. I'm going to label as 3S, 3P and 3D. And how many electrons will they contain? So we sum up all the electrons from the S shell, the P shell, and the D shell. 2 plus 6 plus 10 gives you 18 electrons, which is exactly how the limit should be. And similarly, for principle level 4, we're going to introduce the F subshell. So it has the S, P, D, and F, so all four types. We're going to label them as 4S, 4P, 4D, 4F. So I say again, the number 4 at the front does not represent the number of subshells. It represents the principal energy in which those subshells exist. Okay, so to calculate the number of electrons, it will be S plus P plus D plus F. So it's 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14. And that will give you a total number of electrons of 32. All right, fantastic. So this will be the most important schematic I would take away from this video. So remembering which uh, which subshells exist exist in our um, in our atom, okay. Now the subshells fill up in order of energy. What this basically means is that uh, when you have let's look at principal energy level four, there will be S, P, D, and F subshells, okay. Now we have to look at how these electrons fill up when we're when we're talking about elements. So they will fill up in the S subshells first, and then the P subshells, and then D subshells, and the F subshells. Because simply, um, as I said, they fill up in the order of energy, and the F subshells are higher in energy than the D subshells, higher energy than the P subshells, and then higher energy than the F subshells. Okay, so S, P, D, F. Remember that, and that's increasing in energy. Okay. Now let's look at how we can fill up the electrons within our atom up until the final electron in the fourth principal energy level. Okay, so the first thing we fill up is the lowest position, which is the principal energy level one. So we're going to fill up all the electrons in uh, that region, which is maximum of two, which only contains the S subshell. So therefore, we are going to have one S, and then two at the top will represent the full number of electrons. Uh, which uh, sorry represents the number of electrons within the subshell. Which in case we're going to fill up to the top, and then we're going to fill up the uh, principal energy level two, which is two s two. And remember, there's also a p subshell, so we have to fill that up too. So that's how we represent our electron configuration. And then three s two, which uh, will be the first subshell that we're going to fill up because it's the lowest energy within our principal energy level three, and then we're going to fill up. 3p6, which is the p subshell, and then notice this. There's also a d subshell in the principal energy level 3, and this d subshell will be higher in energy than the p subshell in, in, in uh, principal energy level 3. However, it is also higher in energy than the 4s subshell. So therefore, we have to write the 4s subshell first because we're ranking this in terms of energy strictly. And as you can see, again, the 3D subshell will be higher in energy than the 4S subshell, so we have to write that later. So that's something you have to remember more than anything. And then we fill it up to 4P6, okay? There is uh, there's no explanation that you have to remember, but just simply um, remember that 3D subshells are higher in energy than 4S subshells. So when you're filling that up, you must remember that, okay? So, um, as like I said, the uh, the numbers on top uh, on the subscript of the sorry the superscript of the the subshells like one s two or two s two that little number will represent the number of electrons within the subshell. Okay, now let's look at how we can fill up the number of electrons in a certain element such as magnesium. All right, so first thing uh, we understand that there is twelve um, twelve electrons within its atom, so therefore we have to fill up the principal energy level first. <coughs> so it would be 2s2, 1s2, sorry, and then 2s2, so we have now 4 electrons, now we have left 8 electrons, so we're going to fill up the p subshells, which is 2p6, and then we're going to fill up the s subshell of the third uh, principal energy level. 
So that is a total of 12 electrons, and that is how the electrons are configured around, uh, around the magnesium atom. So if we were to represent this with the box diagram that we talked about earlier, so it's going to fill up the uh, one principal energy level like so, S, and then SP in the second energy level, and then three uh, with um, two electrons within its S subshell. Okay, now let's look at another element such as titanium. We want to fill up the first principal energy level with its uh, subshell, with its S subshell, and it's uh, the S subshell in the principal energy level two, and then the P subshell in the principal energy level two, and then the 3s subshell in the um, in the principal energy level three, and then the P6, so 3p6 in principal energy level three. Remember, there's going to be a four. 4s subshell that we have to fill up before we do the 3d subshell. So we will have to fill the 4s subshell up and that'll give us 4s2. And then we have two more electrons remaining to fill up. And the next subshell we're going to fill up is 3d. So it's going to be 3d2. All right, fantastic. So now let's draw out our diagram of filling up. So we fill up the first principal energy level s, 1s, and then second energy level 2s, 2p. And then the third energy level, 3s, 3p, and then the fourth energy level, 4s, and then the 3d uh, suborbital, which is 3d2. Okay, so that's basically how you fill it up. You just uh, fill it up with ranking energy, with ranking numbers, but just remember that the 3d2 subshell, 3d subshell, will be higher in energy than the 4s subshell. Okay, fantastic. Now let's uh, quickly recap the video. So the subshells that can exist within the atom are S, P, D, and F, and they uh, and they are rating in energy. And uh, remember their shapes. And the within a energy level, the subshells will fill up in order of energy. So they will firstly fill up in order of um, principal energy level, of course. And then you have to understand that the F subshell has the highest energy. Then D subshell has the highest energy, then P and then S. Okay, so they fill up within that order. S first, P and then D and then F. Okay. And then just remember, very importantly, that the 3D subshell will be higher in energy than the 4S subshell. So therefore, you have to fill up the 4S subshell first before you fill the 3D subshell. So thank you very much for watching my video. I hope to. Uh, there will be a second part to our advanced level model of the atom. Please, uh, please watch that to make sure you don't miss anything and uh, thank you very much for watching my video and I hope you all uh, have good luck and do well in your uh, examinations. See you guys.